allies or enemies. This would be like our chapter four, I guess. The sprightly Eva Fathom, former secretary to the high priest Justine, smiled warmly at the Girinos at the gate as she strolled past them on her way into Quill. She walked alone for a short time until she was out of the sight of Artemis. And then she was joined by a young, reddish-haired man who appeared to have been waiting for her. What's going on? he asked. I've convinced him to put the gate back up. He and I are leaving first thing tomorrow for a few days. The young man was silent for a long moment. I'm worried. Don't be. All is well. The plan is solid. And Aaron? This is sooner than he's expecting, but he's as prepared as he can be. Will you tell him about the gate? Eva Fathom looked at the young man warily, as if the question were some sort of test. She responded in turn. Would you? The young man scowled. They walked a few minutes in silence. The wavering heat hung low on the road in front of them, forming a mirage from which a figure emerged. I should go, the young man said. Eva nodded. Good luck, she said. You too. I hope you know what you're doing. Annoyed, Eva responded. I should say the same to you, Mr. Ranger. He turned off at a footpath. A shortcut to the housing quadrants, Eva kept walking towards Quill and the approaching figure. Hello, Aaron, Eva said brightly when the two met up. What news? Our army is growing and we will all, we are all working feverishly to create adequate weapons, adequate weapons. Will you be ready for an attack tomorrow? Aaron hesitated. So soon? It was a split second decision. I think we should take it. I'll be leaving with Marcus in the morning. Aaron hid his alarm. He thought for a moment and murmured. Of, of course, well done. We're, we're always ready. Excellent, the old woman pulled a handful of small clay hearts from her pocket and held them out to Aaron. Aaron narrowed his eyes. What, what, what about the thin metal clips? Scatter clips, they call them? That's, that's what I wanted. What are these? He picked one up and examined it. They look like... They don't look very fierce. It's the component for a spell called heart attack, Eva said. Your brother made them for my daughter at her request. She claims it's the best spell Artemis has ever had. So I stole some. Have you tried it? No, I didn't want to waste any. Is it lethal? Eva Fathom hesitated. Of course it is. It must be. If it's the most powerful spell ever created. Well, well what's there? What's the little saying that, that, that goes with it? Aaron's annoyance grew. He had plainly instructed Eva to bring him scatter clips since he knew their power and how to use them and he hated that he couldn't think of the word the Artemians used. It made him feel uncomfortable and ill-prepared. With this sudden opportunity, he wasn't sure if he could pull everything together by tomorrow, but he'd have to. Heart attack, she said. Throw it at the person. It grows wings or some such thing and strikes your opponent in the chest. He then collapses and is dead. She glanced over her shoulder and pressed her lips together.
You, you kept one for yourself, I hope. The only way we'll gain the power we need is by getting rid of all the key players, especially Mr. Today. He'll never expect it from you, Aaron smiled. He'll never know what hit him if you do it right. That's the plan, Eva said. I'll take care of him, don't you worry. I'm more worried about you mucking things up. Aaron narrowed his eyes but said nothing. It was just the challenge he needed. He might be up working all night, but tomorrow? Tomorrow, he'd be turning Artemis into a disaster zone causing necessaries to flock back to Quill. And once again, he'd climb his way up the ruling ranks when the Quillens saw how he saved them. And if all went well, he'd also rid the world of Alex, Mr. Today, and all of their stupid, unwanted friends once and for all.